This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. You've probably heard the case of Ellen Greenberg if you've been listening uh, to any time on this show. All this week we are laying out our conversation with the parents of Ellen Greenberg. Every night, a new piece in that series coming out. We drop those around 6 p.m. Central here on the feed. Asking questions of what they've gone through. The roadblocks that continue to go in front of them as they try to get justice for the murder of their daughter, Ellen Greenberg. Which is still ruled a suicide, by the way. There is a petition online to try and get that changed and we're going to have that in the episode description for you as well as they try to reach out to the mayor of philadelphia to do the common sense thing and help move this thing into a homicide category so a true investigation can be done now how and why there's so many roadblocks and they've had issue after issue after issue of nobody wanting to take responsibility on this nobody wanting to I guess upset someone who really adamantly does not want this to be ruled a homicide. Who that is? We don't know. Attorney Eric Fattis is joining us right now to talk about that and talk about the roadblocks that that family is is facing. What does a family do in a situation like this where it appears there's a lot of corruption going on and the people that you would go to to seek justice, to investigate a murder which this clearly was don't have, seem to have any interest and you're just kind of stuck on the sideline what's one to do eric yeah you know we we um represent victims as well and, and what, one thing i often tell families is that uh oftentimes you've got to advocate for yourselves you know uh thank heavens we have structures in place and and there there uh there are law enforcement agencies who are great and they're gonna help you often uh, but sometimes they're not. And sometimes, in fact, you're going to be stonewalled but by the very entities in whom you place your trust to try and handle the situation properly. And so I think these these families really have to maybe get unconventional, maybe get creative. And 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 for me, that often means going to the media. I, I in fact, wrote an article on that not too long ago uh, for the Colorado Trial Lawyers Association. And, um, you know, that's one thing that the family really needs to look into because, like you said, these if this information is coming to light where the modern, you know, normal person reviews it and says, gosh, an individual didn't stab themselves 20 times. They didn't stab themselves in the back of the head uh, in a suicide attempt. That, that's ludicrous. And so I think the more the family can get some of these really eye-opening details out to the public, the more public pressure is going to be placed on these uh, authority structures. And, and those structures are going to have to respond to it in some way. Are they going to respond favorably and, and help out the, the public? Are they going to respond negatively and perhaps risk looking corrupt? I mean, the, the, these are all considerations that the AG and, and law enforcement in that, in that place is going to have to consider. And so I think the public is doing the right thing by getting the information out there um, excuse me, the, the victims are doing the right thing, getting the information out there to the public. I think the problem in this specific case that they've been running into is, yes, um, do we, or is it going to risk making uh, some of these authorities look corrupt? Without a doubt, it already has. The problem is we're dealing with a system in Philadelphia that is already known to be very corrupt. So it's like the image is already there. Adding this to the fuel to the fire of corruption is just like, yeah, no one is really surprised. And then it just sits. But having the the media stew on this, having the media talk about this quite frequently, where have have you seen examples? And I I know there are and I've I've seen some as well. But what comes to mind for you where this sort of approach gets traction and gets the ball rolling when seemingly nothing else conventional has? Yeah, you know, um, there have been at least a handful of, of examples in Colorado, my, my home state, um, that I'm aware of where, uh, you know, there, and, and these these came in the context of um, police killings and, 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 um, and police assaults and, and, and things like that, where initially, um, you know, the police just chalked it up to uh, criminal conduct and the police acted appropriately and let's just close the door on that and move on. Yeah. And the family said, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
And they got, you know, uh, the civil rights attorneys involved and they made a huge fuss about it appropriately. So, of course, uh, and, and that caused over time um, some of the jurisdictions to actually bring charges against those police officers in, 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 in those contexts. Uh, one of them was uh, the, the uh, I believe the gentleman, the decedent was Christopher Glass, who was uh, experiencing mental health episode, called police, was ultimately shot uh, inside of his vehicle. And nothing was going to be done about it. And then, mm-hmm. um, you know, the public got involved, the media got involved, and ultimately those officers uh, who were responsible for the killing were charged with criminal offenses. So it can happen. It doesn't always, but it, it's at least a measure that these victims' families have to take, and, and I think it's right for them to take. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.